everybody, and welcome back to Major Misconduct. I'm Scott Taylor. That's Kurt Kielbach. We're at Four Play Sports Bar, and we're live on 360winnipeg.ca. Labor strife for the National Hockey League. I find it extremely interesting. We're at a time where players are signing 14-year contracts for $100 million, and at the same time, they're on the other side of the table arguing over how much money they should get, how much of the profits of the league they should get, and you've hired Donald Fear, who is a guy who has taken out Major League Baseball. Um, are we going to see hockey at the start of the season, or are we going to have to wait maybe till January? Well, the consensus seems to be that we're going to have to wait. And uh, we talked about this one other time. I think there are certain deadlines that each side has. Obviously, the players would like to start right off, right off the bat. And as far as the ownership is concerned, as long as they get the season started by December, once the NFL season is, is winding down, I think uh, they're content with that. But you're right, there's a, there's a real paradox, I suppose, because one of the things that the owners want to bring in is you can't sign these long-term contracts, and so what are they all doing just before the new agreement comes in? They're signing these players to contracts which take them forever with their yes, organization. Exactly. Yeah. And, They'll be long retired, yeah, oh, still yeah. collecting so, money. But nobody else can do it. Once this deadline passes, nobody else can do it, and and uh, it's, it's just, uh, I, I, I really get tired of it. I, I can't imagine how any league can consider itself successful if it has work stoppages every few years. I mean, there's got to be a little bit of a mature attitude here. And every once in a while, everyone's going to say, you know, it's not always up to the other guy to swallow the bullet. Maybe I should take a little bit of a sacrifice, too, for the good of the game, and let's get on with it. But it's getting really, it's redundant, it's boring, and it's a disgrace to the sport year after year to be fighting about whether or not there's going to be a labor stoppage, a work stoppage in the upcoming, at the end of the agreement. It's just been going on too long. It's, it's, I don't like it. We have a paradox between 1996, 2004, and now. 96 and 2004, in, in, bo in both arguments, of uh, 94 rather, 94, 2004, and now. 94 and 2004, the argument was is the Canadian teams, with the Canadian dollar not worth that much, were, were undergoing a lot of stress. Ottawa, uh, Edmonton, Calgary to a certain extent, Vancouver to a certain extent. We're having, we're having troubles in 94 and troubles in 2004, and that's why we had work stoppages. Now we're looking at the, at the NHL. The Canadian teams are flush. They're packing their buildings, and the Canadian dollar is worth the same as the American dollar. In the United States, where the recession really hit, it's hurt hockey most. Because while the recession hasn't killed the NFL by any stretch, or Major League Baseball, which are coming up with some huge attendances in, in distressed cities like Detroit and Chicago, you've got a situation now where the hockey teams are getting beaten up. Anaheim, they're not going. Columbus, they're not going. Nashville, the Islanders, Phoenix. These are, these are communities where the attendances aren't very good. And now it's the American teams yelling and screaming for a bigger share of the pie um, when it comes to revenues. Yeah, the shoe's on the other foot, and it's interesting, you know, they, uh, the uh, Canadian teams are about 30% of the league and provide about 60% of the revenue, and uh, it's in that area because it's a huge sell here, and every, every franchise is successful, certainly, uh, including the newest one here in Winnipeg, but uh, in the U.S. of A., aside from uh, the markets like uh, Philadelphia and, of course, Pittsburgh and, and Washington, once you get off that eastern seaboard and uh, you get uh, more of the other teams that are involved, in, and it's, it's not good, like you say, in Nashville and Phoenix and quite a number of others, in Columbus, <laughs> oh, you know, I, that, that, uh, that is really something what's happened in Columbus now, too, because the early years in Columbus, that was the, the big game in town. I mean, yeah, they had Ohio State, but the, the, the big professional game in town was a huge thing in Columbus, and people all wanted to be Blue Jacket uh, season ticket holders. They got an uh, enthusiastic crowd. You go one year all that time and only make the playoffs the one time, and now you trade away your, the center of your franchise, and it's just going to go downhill. Yeah, it's going all the way downhill. When we come back, we're going to talk about um, uh, the NFL opening training camps this past weekend. Uh, plus, I also want to talk about some jet stories that are going to be on the horizon. This is Major Misconduct. Taylor Keelback, live from Four Play Sports Bar in downtown Winnipeg.